Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Apex Tech Reviews, and today I'm going to be bringing you an overclocking video. For those of you that don't know, overclocking is the act of making your CPU run faster than it's labeled on the box. Sounds nice. Why wouldn't everyone do it? Well, it has some trade-offs. So, yes, overclocking your CPU is great, especially if you do 3D image rendering, if you have some games that are extremely CPU dependent, I'm looking at you, Daisy users. And then also, it just kind of, we know how it gets, the higher clock speed. You have some EP and stuff, whatever, that's on you. I'm not judging you. So the trade-off for it is, these bragging rights that you get, you're gonna get higher average temperatures, you're going to need to create custom fan speeds for it, as well as you're gonna need to check stability, which, just so you know, when you're checking stability, be prepared to not use your PC for about a day. So I'm going to give you a basic guide on how to do it via the BIOS. I'm not going to be using Intel's tuning technology or any of the other stuff that comes with most of these companies. So for today, I'm going to be using a K-series processor, which that's Intel's overclockable brand series. For AMD users, it's going to be the Ryzen chipset. So other than that, we're going to just jump straight into it. I'll show you what to do give you some basic clocks and some basic benches so you can see how this will help you in rendering technologies right off the bat. Alrighty, so I currently have a larger than average screen being used to hopefully make this easier for you to see. I'll pick it up at some points to show you what's going on. So we're gonna run Cinebench right now on the stock speed of the CPU itself. So on this 6700K, it comes out of the box with four gigahertz with a 4.2 turbo. I went ahead and turned off the turbo boost and we're just gonna do it at the stock four gigahertz clock to show you from base to overclock the performance increase that you can expect. So here we go, we're gonna run the Cinebench now. Alrighty, so our score in Cinebench is 864. Scary. Let's see what we can expect. The overclocking. So what you want to do, sorry, bad camera work. What you're going to do is you're just going to go ahead and restart your PC. And you're going to try to boot the BIOS. So if you can't hear that, I'm furiously clicking the delete button. Delete is generally what you're going to use to get into your BIOS. There we go. So, first thing you want to do is make sure XMP is on. This is what you enable to make sure that your RAM is running at its actual listed speed, not the base speed that it would run without it. So base speed's 2133. Sadly for me, my RAM is 2133. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna go into the overclock mode. So what you'll have here is your overclocking settings. You have your CPU settings, your CPU ratio, CPU ratio singly. This was the apply mode, so you can apply it to all cores, single cores. So you could even go per core and you can go through and set a higher core clock for a specific core itself, just in case you're doing a task that just uses one, two, or three cores. What we're doing now is we're gonna go ahead and overclock them all. So your CPU ratio is at 40. How you figure out your actual clock speed is you times it by your base clock. Here it is, it's at 100. So you would times that by 40 and you'd get four gigahertz, 4.0. So we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna try and dial this upwards. So we're gonna do this to, let's go to 445. That's 4.5 gigahertz. Now, since I've already done some tuning, now we need to go to voltage. So for certain clocks, you're gonna need to get some stable voltages. So the clock that we, this core voltage we were using while we did the first Cinebench was 1.17. So what you do now is you just go in. So we're gonna try for 4.5, let's try 1.29. So we're, we've got a 1.29 core voltage. We're still running at the regular base clock, which you can also overclock using the base clock, 
but that would be in a later video where I explain the pros and cons of using the base clock. So here we go, 45, and we're just gonna go ahead and boot back up. Alrighty. So now that everything is back up and running, we are going to check once again in Cinebench just how well it does. This is at 4.5 gigahertz. And already we have an increase. We are now at 966 in our score. Now let's try and uh, get that a little bit higher. But before I do that, let's go ahead and check the temperatures out. Open up CPU ID. And here we go. Current temperatures are in the 30s, some points in the 40s degrees C. Uh, a little hot, but generally, this is idle, but what I mean by a little hot. Generally, you can idle from anywhere in the mid-teens all the way up to the mid-30s, even low 40s. Generally, you want to be careful about high temperatures you hit, as well as how much voltage you put in. When you're doing these overclocks, I personally wouldn't go above 1.4. You risk damaging your CPU and the life of your CPU and motherboard by doing so. And you also want to watch out for the temperatures that your CPU hits under load. I stick to the sub 80 degrees Celsius range. Once you get above that, you're risking damaging the CPU, even though Intel has a TDP of 105 degrees Celsius, I would say stay a little bit under it just for the longevity of your system and you don't have to go through the very unfortunate events of having to buy a whole new CPU or possibly a motherboard. So let's just see how far we can go. Let's do all this again. Ah, there you go. This is one of the unfortunate events of overclocking, and this will make you hit your head on the table. So the clock was too high as long as the voltage. So I could add more voltage, or I could bring my clock down to make sure this is stable. I personally would just go ahead and bring the clock down. You don't want to have to continually add voltage. You don't want to go to a point where you're not comfortable any longer. So that's how I would handle this. So let's bring this down to just 4.6. You can stay at Alrighty, here we are back in Cinebench once more, and we're gonna run it. Now, the first test was at 4.5 gigahertz. Now we're gonna be running at 4.6, because at 4.8 at 135, the CPU just did not like it. Now, I could be messing with the base lock clock, like I told you, you could do to squeeze out a little bit more overclockability, but that'll have to be for a later video, and you have to be able to watch out for what you're doing without causing too many problems for yourself. So here we go. And as you can see, the benefit is very marginal from 4.5 to 4.6, but from 4.0 to 4.5, it was a very large gain. Alrighty, so I've now shown you the raw performance gains of overclocking your CPU, but I need to tell you what's going on. You should actually check the stability of your clocks before you just jump straight into something like that. And I would suggest using a program called ADA64 or ASUS's ROG RealBench. These will test the stability of your clocks. It will tell you whether or not your clocks are unstable, stable, or it'll cause your computer to crash. And then at that point, 
you know it's unstable, or at least I would hope. So then you can dial down your clocks and try again. When you do these, I'd say do it for 12 hours on Asus's real bench and then 12 hours on Aida 64. Now, I also got to show you something about the marginal gains and the long gains that can come from overclocking in Cinebench. So you get to watch from 4 GHz to 4.5, the major difference it caused, but from 4.5 to 4.6 it was completely negligible. So there is a point when you're going to get diminishing returns for certain things that you're doing. Now I could go much higher than this, but there'd be a lot more trade-offs and I'd have to start manipulating the base clock, which like I said, will be in another video. Now. Would I advise you to do this? Sure, if you want to get a little bit more longevity out of your PC, especially if you're doing some type of rendering, and I keep referencing it because I'm a very poor person in the fact that I actually enjoy playing DayZ. It definitely helps out a lot in that game. Now, the pros and the cons, you're raising the voltages, you're having more heat output, you have to go in, you gotta make sure you're messing with your fan curves, for myself, I'm using a Corsair H100i V2, and I've manipulated the fan curve to about a 50%, and I'm getting around 35, 40 degrees C at idle. So your mileage may vary. Now, you can use a regular cooler instead of an all-in-one like I am, but do not use the stock cooler. I don't even know how you get a stock cooler with a K-Series or one of the Ryzen chips. The, theirs is fairly decent for their CPUs, but I would still advise you getting an aftermarket cooler of some sort to bring these temperatures down. And then you have the definite con of not really knowing initially of where your clock speed is going to be because, I mean, these crashes, they can come at the most inopportune times. So, like, I at one point was running at 1.25 volts and it was stable on 4.5 gigahertz on both RealBench and ADA64, but when I went into Doom, boom, would crash which is not a CPU intensive game, which is actually a great, uh, greatly optimized game, which I have a video coming up where I show you how greatly optimized that is. But overall, like, if you feel that you're gonna be getting a benefit from this, you do some type of rendering stuff, you play poorly optimized games that need a lot of CPU power and doesn't split the tasks evenly, this would be what I would tell you to do. But remember, it's at your own risk because you could have the possibility of damaging your chip and that really sucks. So at the end of the day, it's either more power, more EPing for the internet, or it's just stay your stable clocks if you don't really feel comfortable. You don't have to buy a K-series, but if you buy a K-series, your potential for resale is higher than buying a regular series chip. So with all of that said, thank you guys so much for being here.